Hey everybody, welcome in, it's Nova here, Rock and Stone. In this video, we're going to be doing a comprehensive overview of the Gunner class in Deep Rock Galactic. We have many, many topics to cover. We're going to be going over the basics, so what Gunner's strengths are, how he fits into the game. We're going to discuss the shield generator, the zipline launcher, and the armor suit special. We're going to discuss all six weapons, primary and secondary. We're going to go over builds with and without overclocks for all of them. We're going to discuss the grenades. And lastly, we are going to discuss survival tips for the higher hazard levels 4 and 5, as well as perks that I feel closely tie with the gunner class. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive right into the basics. We're going to be talking about gunner's strengths and what he contributes to the team in DRG. As Gunner, you are the Crowd Control and Ammo Efficiency Specialist. You are also known as the Wall. We will get to the Wall in a moment when we talk about the shields. As Gunner, you are able to mow down crowds of enemies and pick off the stragglers that are behind really, really easily. Your primaries are the more crowd control side of your arsenal. You've got the minigun with its very high rate of fire, the auto cannon with its high spread. Initially, one might think that's a bad thing, but it's really not because then that lets you hit more bugs, especially because the autocannon does direct and AoE damage with each shot, so the spread doesn't really matter all that much. And then you've got the Hurricane, with its basically infinite range, because you guide the missiles around. It is very, very easy to pick off faraway targets and just start damaging crowds before they even get near you. And then you've got your secondaries, which are geared more towards the single target side of your arsenal. The Bulldog has extremely high damage per shot, the burst pistol has a very high rate of fire, and the coil gun can pierce right through enemies and hit other enemies behind them. It also has range, much like the hurricane, it can basically hit anything anywhere. You are often the last dwarf to run low on ammo or run out of ammo completely, because of how ammo efficient your builds are as a whole. Now we're going to talk about being the wall. This is where we're going to talk about the shields. This is the linchpin for the gunner class. It has tons and tons of utility, including, but not limited to, protection for both yourself and allies during hordes. You'll want to watch out for uh, bugs like rollers, parasites, and also environmental hazards. They will be able to get through it. Unfortunately, the shield does not protect you from things like stabber vines in the hollow bow. It's kind of sag there. You are able to push bugs away from yourself and your allies. This is particularly strong when you are resurrecting your teammates, when you are getting a resupply, or getting the bugs off of objectives such as Haxi on sabotage missions. This is an incredible clutch. It can prevent the mission from failing. I love the shields. I use them a lot. They, they have too much utility. Like I said, there's even more that I didn't list here. But these are the most common scenarios that you'll run into. Alright, now we're going to touch on the zipline launcher. This is Gunner's traversal tool. There is an angle and length limit to it, but it's not typically an issue. It's only like extreme angles or extreme lengths that you might run into trouble, but it's not really a problem. You don't have a lot of mobility as Gunner in a general sense, and the zipline launcher certainly doesn't help with that, but that's okay. You can use the zip lines though to avoid ground bugs that are underneath you. You will want to be careful for bugs like spitters, mactera, menaces, and rollers. They can knock you off pretty easily. I do recommend taking the length and motor traction upgrades on the zip lines to make things a little bit easier. There is currently a bug that is still in the game with disconnection protection though. If you get off the zipline, you retain the disconnection protection fall damage bonus until you go down, which is pretty interesting that that hasn't been patched out yet. And then lastly, we've got the armor suit special. This provides you with a 50% damage reduction against explosions. There are tons and tons of things that cause explosions in this game, such as exploders, the exploding plants on several of the maps. Of course, there are others, including grenades. This can help against grenades as well. Unfortunately, though, sad for us, it's not quite enough to resist a bulk detonator explosion. Eh, we can dream, right? 
Alright guys, now we're gonna move into talking about the minigun. For all six weapons, we're gonna be discussing the ins and outs, what makes them unique from each other, and we're also gonna do builds with and without overclocks. Let's start with the minigun. What's unique about it? It has a relatively low damage per shot. It makes up for it with a pretty high rate of fire though. It does have the ability to stun, a 20% chance per shot for one second. Stunning is a very powerful effect in this game. Keeps stuff like Praetorians from spitting on you, from Stingtails grabbing you, all that kind of good stuff. It does have a very noticeable 0.7 second spin up time though before it even starts to shoot. This can be problematic, especially in high fast paced scenarios. It does become more accurate as it's fired though, so you actually do get a decent amount of range. You never have to reload the minigun, but it can overheat after about 10 seconds of firing the weapon continuously if you don't stop, and by default the overheat duration is 10 seconds before you can use the weapon again. Alright, so let's talk about a build without overclocks. We'll start there. I would recommend taking increased rate of fire in tier 1 just to bring that up a little bit more. I'd also recommend the increased ammo. This brings you up to 3000 ammo, which is pretty significant. There is also armor breaking that I really like in tier 3. Armor breaking for me is a very nice quality of life thing to have. That way you don't have to aim specifically at the bug's weak points or anything. You can rip off their armor and kill them pretty quickly if you're not able to get to the weak points. To make up for that 0.7 second spin up time, I recommend taking faster spin up in tier 4. This brings the spin up down to 0.3 which helps, it's much faster, and then aggressive venting in tier 5. This cuts the overheat duration in half from 10 seconds to 5, and it also deals heat damage and fear to enemies around you when the weapon does overheat, which is pretty cool. It's a very general purpose build. It works in the vast majority of scenarios. Alright, now we're going to talk about builds with overclocks. The first overclock for the minigun that we are going to discuss is a little more oomph. This one is short and sweet. It gives you one additional point of damage and decreases your spin up time by 0.2. As far as how I build it, I build it the exact same way as I was just talking about with general purpose, with increased rate of fire, ammo, armor breaking, spin up time, and aggressive venting. What this allows the minigun to do is you have a near instant spin up time of 0.1 seconds. You can barely notice that. So if you're somebody who really struggles with the spin up time on the minigun, this is a build that I would strongly recommend for you because no other minigun build is able to do this. And you can really get yourself out of sticky situations by not having to worry about the spin up time on the minigun. It's pretty crazy. Alright, the next overclock we are going to be talking about is Bullet Hell. This one is not super powerful, but I like to run it because I think it is super fun. What Bullet Hell does is when you shoot out your shots, there's a 75% chance to ricochet those shots onto another enemy within 6 meters. Or if you hit terrain, there's a 75% chance to ricochet onto an enemy within 6 meters of where that bullet hit. So your bullets are just flying absolutely all over the place. It is really fun to watch this. However, you've got some pretty significant downsides to consider, including that your spread increases by 500%, which is quite a bit. You basically can't hit anything if it's outside of point blank range. And your damage is also cut by three, which is actually quite a bit for the minigun. So how would I build it? I would strongly advise taking accuracy in tier one, Otherwise, like I said, you can't shoot anything unless it's right in front of you. With accuracy, you at least have a good amount of range, which is nice to have. I also recommend damage in tier 2. This brings your damage up to the point where you now only need two shots to kill swarmers instead of three, which is something to consider because you're running through ammo a little bit quicker with this one because you don't have as much damage per shot, so having that extra damage is pretty nice. And then in tier 3, I like to run blow through rounds. This can help you get even more value out of your shots, because they can pierce and through to hit another enemy, which is pretty neat. I like to take the spin up time in tier 4, just to bring that spin up time down to 0.3 instead of having it be 0.7. And then I like to take hot bullets in tier 5. 
I like to combine hot bullets with blow-through rounds because then, as your shots are piercing and spreading through the enemies, they will also spread the fire even further, which can be really good, especially in crowds of smaller enemies like swarmers, grunts, and slashers, those types of things. And you can light an entire crowd on fire pretty easily. Alright guys, the final overclock we're going to be discussing for the minigun is Lead Storm. This is practically the polar opposite of Bullet Hell. With Lead Storm, you get plus 4 damage per shot, which is pretty significant for a weapon like the minigun. However, you take several penalties for this. Your stun chance is cut down from 20% to 5%. Your stun duration is cut from 1 second to half a second. And you also cannot move while you are actively firing the minigun. You are completely locked in place. We'll get to more on how to mitigate that in a moment. So how do I build Lead Storm? I would recommend getting that rate of fire up in Tier 1. This increases your DPS by quite a bit. I also recommend taking damage in Tier 2 for the same reason. You can really bring your DPS pretty high with those two mods put together alone. And then Armor Breaking in Tier 3 to take advantage of that DPS, taking the spin-up time in Tier 4, and then aggressive venting in Tier 5, just so that you can minimize your downtime. This can shred Dreadnoughts like crazy. I love running this on Dreadnought missions. It takes them down pretty quickly. Now, to mitigate that downside of not being able to move, there is a known technique known as the Bunny Hop to mitigate the downside. To do this, you stop firing the minigun, and you jump in the direction that you're looking to jump, and you just keep firing. You can use this to move around and mitigate the lack of being able to move. You can also be on your zip lines in shooting the minigun. You can also be on Doretta on escort missions because she'll just be taking you wherever. So there are plenty of ways to mitigate not being able to move with Lead Storm. It's actually pretty easy. All right, we have finished up with the minigun. Let's start talking about the auto cannon now. This is the second of three of Gunner's primaries. What's unique about the auto cannon? It has the ability to deal direct and AOE damage with each shot. This helps it really excel with crowd control in particular. It ramps up its rate of fire over time, starts out a little bit slow and ramps up up to a peak rate of fire. You will have trouble with range with the auto cannon. The spread is pretty significant. You don't really need the auto cannon at range, though. You've got your secondaries that can take care of that for you. And another thing to keep in mind is the extremely long reload time at 5 seconds. If you have Born Ready, though, the perk, you can mitigate that pretty easily. Okay, let's talk about a build without overclocks. What I like to do with the auto cannon, if I'm not going to use an overclock on this weapon, is I like to take expanded ammo bags in Tier 1, just to have a couple extra clips worth of ammo. In Tier 2, I like Lighter Barrel Assembly. It increases your minimum baseline rate of fire a little bit. But what I like about it is that you gain, you ramp up your rate of fire 50% faster. You can get to your peak rate of fire a lot quicker with this. And then in Tier 3, I like Supercharged Feed Mechanism. This also increases your minimum rate of fire by a little bit. But now, in addition, it also increases your maximum rate of fire by two. So now, with just those two upgrades alone, you can get to a peak rate of fire of seven and a half, 50% quicker, which is really going to help in dense combat scenarios. In tier four, I like to go with shrapnel rounds. This gives you a bit more AOE radius, just to take advantage of the auto cannons crowd control power. And then I'm going to leave tier five blank here, actually. Because all three of these are good with this build, the way I see it. It just depends on what you're looking for, if there's something that you want. If you want more damage, if you want to max that out, go for Feedback Loop. This gives you 10% more direct and area damage when you are at maximum rate of fire. If you want to scare the bugs away from you, you can use Suppressive Fire. This applies a fear effect with your shots. And if you want to have some more longevity, you can take Damage Resistance at full rate of fire. You take 50% less damage from all sources when this is active. That's pretty significant. You become very, very tanky with the autocannon with this upgrade alone. All right.
right, let's get into a couple builds with overclocks now. The first overclock we're going to talk about is combat mobility. I love this one to bits, and I'm going to explain why. The overclock increases your movement speed while firing the weapon from 50% of normal movement speed to 85%. The debuff is significantly lower. Your minimum rate of fire increases by almost a full point. Your rate of fire ramps up 50% faster, and your spread is 30% smaller. Those are all pretty crazy benefits to combine. The only issue with combat mobility is your magazine size is cut in half from 110 to 55. It's pretty easy to mitigate though. The build that I like to run with combat mobility is taking the increased clip size in tier 1. I like to be able to fire for a period of time before having to reload. And I don't typically run into ammo issues as far as running out of ammo. This build is pretty ammo efficient. In tier 2, I like to take improved gas system to increase that rate of fire, maximum rate of fire, by 2. That is the same as the tier 3 mod that I was talking about with the non-overclock build. And then in tier 3, I like to take higher velocity rounds for more damage. Tier 4, I like to take armor breaking to be able to shred the bug's armor when I'm running around them. And then to complement all of that, I like to run feedback loop to increase the damage that I deal. Maxing out the rate of fire and taking the tier 5 mod gives you a pretty significant damage boost. And the increased movement speed, like I said, it doesn't drag you down. This is the fastest moving setup that you can have for Gunner. So if you're struggling with the lack of mobility with Gunner while you're firing your weapons, I would strongly recommend taking a look at this overclock. Alright guys, we're gonna dive into the next overclock I'd like to showcase with the autocannon, and that is Neurotoxin Payload. This overclock is very closely tied with Bullet Hell as far as being my favorite overclock in this entire game. So what Neurotoxin Payload does is every shot has a 50% chance to inflict the Neurotoxin damage over time effect. This slows enemies down and deals damage over time to them, 12 DPS for 10 seconds within the AoE radius. Your AoE radius is increased by 0.3 meters, your area damage is cut down by 6, and you also lose a full clip of your maximum ammo. This overclock actually got nerfed when Season 4 came out, but it's still very, very powerful, in my opinion. So the way I like to build it is basically how I built the autocannon without overclocks, with increased ammo, lighter barrel assembly, supercharged feed mechanism, and shrapnel rounds. Although in tier 5, I like to take the suppressive fire to also inflict the fear effect. This is very, very powerful and absolutely insane, because you can scare your enemies away and still be dealing damage over time to them. And if they're not attacking you, running away, taking damage over time, it's very, very easy to finish them off. I like to pair this one with lead spray. Those two overclocks together, I have found, can do almost anything. It's a very, very powerful build paired together because you've got your sustained damage with Neurotoxin Payload and then you've got your burst damage with Lead Spray. It's very, very nice to put these together. Alright guys, we're gonna talk about the Hurricane now. This is the final gunner primary weapon that you can have. What's unique about the Hurricane? The main strength of this weapon is the range. If you can see an enemy, you can shoot it, because you can guide the rockets around to hit targets from any distance. What I like to do with this one is start to weaken crowds and shoot at them before they even reach me in the first place. That way, they can be finished off with either your grenades or your secondary. This is also the only gunner weapon where you can have armor breaking and weak spot damage in the same build. Those upgrades are in two different tiers, so that's pretty significant. Much like the autocannon, it does have the ability to inflict direct and AoE damage, raising its ammo efficiency. The rate of fire of 3 is kinda sluggish though. It can make some battles difficult if there's a lot of enemies in the area. Your DPS kinda suffers a tad. It also has the lowest ammo of all the primaries, the lowest total ammo, so that is something to bear in mind. Oh, and side note, this resembles the Rhino from Ratchet & Clank, by the way. <laughs> Alright, moving into a build without overclocks, we're gonna talk about a build that I like to run. Because of that lack of ammo, I like to take increased ammo in Tier 1. That helps alleviate that issue a little bit. 
And then like I mentioned with Armor Breaking and Weak Spot, those are located in Tier 2 and 4 respectively. I like to take both of those. I like to take Increased Rate of Fire in Tier 3, that brings your Rate of Fire up to 4. And then the Stun mod in Tier 5. This is even better than the one on the minigun. The one for the Hurricane has a 25% chance versus the minigun's 20, and it stuns for 3 seconds instead of 1 second. That's a lot. 3 seconds stun is pretty significant, actually. Alright guys, now we're gonna dig into overclocks for the Hurricane. The first one we're gonna talk about is Overtuned Feed Mechanism. This one is pretty simple. It increases the maximum velocity of your rockets by 20% so they move faster, and it increases your rate of fire by 1. So now your baseline rate of fire is 4. The way I like to build Overtuned Feed Mechanism, I like to go for damage in Tier 1 instead of ammo, because your DPS can get pretty high with this one, as well as Armor Breaking and Weak Spot in Tiers 2 and 4. What I like about taking Nano Missiles in Tier 3 is your clip size is now 72. With a rate of fire of 4, you can fire for 18 seconds straight without having to reload. That is a very, very long time for any weapon on any class. It's pretty crazy. And then I still like to run the stun in Tier 5, because you get more missiles out, you can stun more frequently, and you have that 3 second stun time, which is often enough time to finish off most normal enemies. Alright guys, now we are going to be digging into Rocket Barrage. Much like Bullet Hell, this overclock is just fun. I think it is anyway. This actually used to be Manual Guidance Cutoff. Manual Guidance Cutoff got turned into this. You still don't have Rocket Guidance anymore, but now you have 216 more rockets. Your rate of fire has tripled. You lose, though, 8 direct damage and 9 area damage. So your damage is cut down by quite a bit. But it's fun. You shoot rockets everywhere right in front of you. The bugs are going to get taken care of pretty quickly. To make up for that lack of damage, though, I build it pretty much the exact same way that I build Overtuned Feed Mechanism with the same mod set. I just feel like this works really, really well with both of those overclocks. If you want, you can take Improved Feed Mechanism in Tier 3. Your rate of fire goes up to 12. You run out of ammo in your clip in 3 seconds, but it's a pretty interesting show. It kind of turns into the minigun in a way. The stun mod is actually pretty good here, because the more rockets you can get out, much like with Overtuned Feed Mechanism, the more frequently you can enable that stun. So it's actually not all bad, in a grand scheme of things. Alright everybody, we have finished up with the primary weapons for Gunner, let's get into the secondaries. The first one is the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. So what sets it apart from the other two secondaries? Well first off, it has a very high baseline damage per shot of 60. Even without any mods, overclocks, or anything, that is already enough damage to one-shot headshot grunts on any difficulty, including Hazard 5. You have a 50% chance to stun the target for a second and a half. You have a baseline plus 25% weak spot damage bonus. However, you have a very limited ammo bag of 28 shots if you count the 4 that are in the weapon, and the 24 in reserve. But you can sure do quite a bit of damage with those 28 shots. Okay, let's go ahead and dig into a build without overclocks. I would recommend taking Accuracy in Tier 1. This brings your base spread down by 30%. This can help especially at long range. I would recommend Ammo in Tiers 2 and 4. This brings your reserve ammo up to 48, doubling it. Each of the mods gives 12, so you've got a lot more longevity. I would strongly recommend taking the weak spot damage bonus in tier 3, and the reason for that is now on any hazard level, including 5, with that bonus, you can now one-shot headshot slashers, one-shot belly shot Mactera spawn, two-shot headshot guards, and two-shot belly shot trijaws. That's pretty significant. You can save a lot of ammo by taking advantage of that weak spot bonus. 
And then in tier 5, I recommend Deadeye. This is another thing that helps with accuracy. Because with most weapons, your accuracy gets worse if you are in motion. The reticle gets bigger. But with Deadeye, the reticle stays the, stays the same size, even though you are in motion. So that really helps with being able to run around a crowd and just keep shooting. Alright everybody, we are now going to dig into builds with overclocks. The first one we're going to take a look at is Six Shooter. This one is another one of those super fun ones, and it's also really, really powerful. What this one does is it increases your clip size by two, so you actually have six shots in there. You get six more maximum ammo. Your rate of fire doubles, which is neat. However, you do take a hit to your base spread. It increases by 50%, and your reload time is increased by half a second. I build this pretty similarly to the non-overclock build. I start with accuracy in tier 1 again. This keeps your base spread from being too high. I like to take floating barrel in tier 2. This decreases your spread per shot, so when you're firing shots in rapid succession, your spread is shorter and smaller with this one, and your recoil is a lot less profound. I still take the weak spot damage in tier 3, keep that 60% bonus, and then take the extra ammo in tier 4, as well as Deadeye in tier 5. I like to run around a crowd with this one. You get more shots in there. You're more accurate. I like to run this one with combat mobility and kind of create a run and gun combination with the two of those. Alright guys, the next overclock we're going to touch on with the Bulldog is Magic Bullets. This one is pretty crazy, to be honest. And here's why. All bullets that impact terrain, yes, all of them, this is not like Bullet Hell where the chance is 75%. With magic bullets, any bullet that impacts terrain automatically ricochets to a nearby enemy within 5 meters. Your accuracy is effectively 100%. You also get plus 8 to your maximum ammo, however you also take a minus 20 cut to your direct damage. That honestly doesn't matter at all. I build this one with increased reload speed in tier 1, cut that reload time down, ammo in tiers 2 and 4 once again, but now I like to add explosive rounds to tier 3 because then you can take out bugs in an area. This is especially good for grunts, regular grunts and swarmers, as well as the shockers if you hit them with this, they'll be hitting an AoE kind of effect. And then also, Neurotoxin in Tier 5. It has the exact same functionality as Neurotoxin Payload does on the autocannon. It has a 50% chance to inflict that Neurotoxin DOT, slowing enemies down, dealing damage over time. You can spread poison all across a crowd with this. It's pretty crazy. I like to run this one with Bullet Hell, create a whole random bullets build. It's just a fun little spectacle to watch. Alright everybody, we have finished up with the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. Let's go ahead and dive into the Burst Pistol. This is the second of three of Gunner's secondary weapons. So what's unique about the Burst Pistol? As its name implies, it fires in a burst three rounds by default. You have eight bursts before you need to reload the weapon. Speaking of the bursts, the rate of fire on this weapon in the statistics area determines how frequently the bursts can be fired. So the higher that number is, the faster you can spam out those bursts. The Burst Pistol also has a 50% armor breaking bonus by default, which is kind of interesting. Okay, let's talk about a build without overclocks. The first mod that I would recommend is the Accuracy mod in Tier 1. This brings your base spread down by 30% and brings your spread per shot down by 40%, which is pretty good. I would recommend the Rate of Fire mod in Tier 2. This brings your Rate of Fire up to 5 from 3, so you can fire the bursts much more frequently. I would recommend Damage in Tier 3. With this one, your DPS almost doubles from Base Kit if you combine it with Disabled Safety for Rate of Fire in Tier 2, which is pretty good without overclocks. And then I would recommend Additional Ammo in Tier 4 and the Burst Stun in Tier 5. If all three shots in a burst hit an enemy, it will stun them 100% of the time for 4 seconds. 
This can be really, really important against enemies such as Praetorians and especially Mactera. You know, Mactera Trijaws, the Brundles, because they have a tendency to deal a lot of damage. And being able to disable them for several seconds is going to make getting rid of them a lot easier. Alright, now we're going to start talking about builds with overclocks. The first overclock we're going to talk about is Lead Spray. I absolutely love this one. What this one does is it gives you a 50% increase in damage from your default, which is pretty crazy for this weapon. However, you take a significant accuracy debuff, your spread is 300% larger. I like to build Lead Spray the exact same way that I built the Burst Pistol without overclocks, especially accuracy, because I have found in practice that without accuracy, I miss point blank, even against enemies that you can get up against and have pretty good size weak points, such as Praetorians, Oppressors, and Dreadnoughts. And with accuracy, you actually have a little bit of range. You can kind of get to a decent mid-range, I have found, in most cases. And you can back up from those really powerful, really dangerous enemies. You have a very high DPS, the burst stun fits in with this very nicely, because you can stun enemies like guards and Praetorians, they can't attack you, and you can just keep spamming lead spray into them, and they will die very, very fast, and they can't fight back. I love pairing this one with Neurotoxin Payload if I'm going with a generalist loadout for most mission types, and I like to pair it with Lead Storm if I'm going up against Dreadnoughts or doing another single target heavy mission. Alright, the next overclock we are going to discuss is Micro Flechettes. This is basically the polar opposite of Lead Spray. This one cuts your damage by 11, so now you're down to 10, which is a pretty significant cut. However, you do have plus 30 added to your magazine size, your maximum ammo is doubled, you have half the spread per shot and half the recoil, so that's not all bad. I would build it with damage in mind to make up for that lack of damage, because you cannot one-shot swarmers anymore. If you take the tier 1 and tier 3 damage mods though, you will be able to do this. I would still recommend taking Rite of Fire in tier 2. And then because you have so much ammo already with this overclock, like I said, it is doubled, I would recommend Armor Breaking in Tier 4 to pair with the Burst Stun in Tier 5. This will allow you to more easily and more quickly spam that Burst Stun, and you can basically lock enemies down. So there's actually a pretty good strength to Micro Flechettes, and it's really based on that ammo. You can do quite a bit with it, actually. Alrighty, everyone, last but not least, we're going to be discussing the Coil Gun. This is the third of three of Gunner's secondary weapons. What's unique about the Coil Gun? First off, it is a hitscan weapon. You can hit anything anywhere. If you've got stuff like Spitters, Mactera, or Menaces harassing you from a really long distance and you just can't hit them, you can use this weapon, aim it straight at them, shoot, and you will hit them. This weapon also has the ability to pierce through terrain. Not indefinitely, but you can hit through most small, medium thickness walls and hit something behind it. So like salt crystals on the salt pits, or crystalline caverns crystals in that planetary zone. You can still hit enemies behind it and potentially kill them, depending on what kind of enemies they are. Now what's interesting with ammo, with the coil gun, it's measured in a strange way. You've got 640 ammo, but it takes 40 units of that ammo per shot to fire this weapon. So in essence, you only have 16 shots. They deal quite a bit of damage though, but that's just something to bear in mind. All right, let's dig into a build without overclocks. I would first recommend ammo in tier one. This gives you another handful of shots before you completely run out of ammo. I like charge speed in tier two. I want to be able to fire these shots out as quickly as possible. I like stun in tier 3. I like basically anything that gives stun. I will recommend defense enhancement in tier 4. This gives you more defense while you are charging the weapon. And speaking of that, it actually has utility in that respect. You can use it to defend yourself against fall damage. You can use it to defend yourself against environmental damage. You don't have to fire the weapon to get the benefit of this. You just have to be charging it. And then in tier 5, I recommend the Electricity Trail, 
because in addition to the electric damage, it slows enemies by 80%, which is quite a bit. They're almost at a standstill. It's very easy then to finish enemies off with your primary or your grenades. Alright, let's dig into a couple builds with overclocks. The first overclock we're going to talk about is triple tech chambers. This one's fun to use. I like it. What this one does is, after you release the first fully charged shot, if you shoot again within one second of that shot, you can fire a second time. If you fire within one second of that, you can fire a third time. The second and third shots deal 25% less damage, cost half the ammo, and do not penetrate terrain. But nonetheless, you can still get out three shots at once before having to reload. As far as a build, I would recommend the exact same build that I suggested for a build without overclocks. Especially because the downside of this one also is you have a slower charge speed and your reload time is increased by half a second. So being able to get out those extra two shots is going to be helpful. And just for fun, defense enhancement used to be bugged with this one. What you used to be able to do was fire two shots, or three if you wanted to, and the defense enhancement would stick around forever until you started to charge a shot again. And unless you fired at least two shots, it would disappear. Which was pretty busted. Don't get me wrong, you became extremely tanky with that one, especially if you were running the autocannon with the defense mod in tier 5. You basically could not be killed. It was pretty wild stuff. Unfortunately, that has been patched out. That's a sad sh But what I also really like about this one is the fact that you can have the three trails. They can all be electrified and have stunning power, which is pretty significant. Alright, the next overclock we are going to talk about for the coil gun is Hellfire. This one is another very fun overclock to use. What this one does is, upon shooting a fully charged shot, it gains the ability to heat up enemies around the trail. It is very, very fast, lighting these guys on fire. However, the downsides you have are you lose 200 ammo, so that's several of your shots, your charge speed is 30% slower, and your trail duration is cut by 2 seconds. This one is still really, really powerful. And like the others, I actually really like the non-overclocks build for this one also, and here's why. You can have fire from the overclock itself, you can have stun from tier 3, and you can have the electric trail in tier 5. That is three statuses at once. In a single weapon, in a single shot. You can't really get that anywhere else. That is very, very powerful. It's just nuts what you can do with those mods alone. Alright everyone, we have finished off with all of Gunner's weapons, primary and secondary. We are now going to move into the grenades. Much like with the weapons, I'm going to describe the basic facts about the grenades. And then I'm also going to describe my favorite places that I like to use them or where I have used them in the past. So first off, we've got the Sticky Grenade. This is the first one that Gunner gets. You get six of these. There is a bit of impact direct damage when you throw this out and it sticks to an enemy. It's not a whole lot. However, the significant thing is the fear factor upon impact. It is 250%, which is a lot. Most bugs that can be feared are gonna start running with that kind of fear factor on them. It explodes after 2 seconds. It has a good amount of direct and area damage, 90 and 130 respectively. The AoE radius is 4. The explosion also has a fear factor, but it's only 100%. So it's not as big, but it is there. My favorite spot to use these is actually against Dreadnoughts, specifically the Hiveguard's crown, or at least that's what I like to call it. It's the three pink spots that come out once you've killed the Sentinels. When I throw these on the front of him, in the one in the middle, it's able to hit all three at once. I only have to throw out a few of these, and then they'll all get destroyed. And then I just go behind him, and then use whatever my primary or secondary is to deal damage to his backside weak point. Alright, the next grenade we are going to talk about is the Incendiary Grenade. This is the second grenade that Gunner can have. You get four of these. 
These are pretty simple. You throw them out like a Molotov, they blank in an area and fire. They light things on fire very, very quickly. The flames last for 6 seconds and deal roughly 13 DPS. The AoE heat radius and flames radius are 3.5 and 4.3 respectively. They're really, really handy for crowd control. As Gunner, you excel at crowd control. These fit into that very, very well. This is my personal favorite grenade of them all. They work basically anywhere. I run these with almost all of my loadouts, but especially with Neurotoxin Payload, because then you've got the Poison DOT, with fear, the bugs are running away from you, potentially through the fire, taking multiple status effects at the same time. Most weaker bugs are going to die very, very quickly. Alright guys, the next grenade we are going to discuss is the Cluster Grenade. This is the third of four of possible grenades that you can select from. You get four of these, so you toss this little guy out, and it opens up into nine little bomblets that spread out even further. For their size, they actually have a pretty good AoE radius and damage. The radius is almost 4, and their damage is 40, and that's for each one, so multiply that by 9, you've got 360 total, which is pretty good. You also have a 50% chance to stun for a second and a half per bomblet. The main issue here is friendly fire. It's very, very easy to hit yourself and your teammates with these, especially if you're in close quarters, like on a salvage mission or something like that. And on low gravity, the bomblets spread out even further, so that is something to bear in mind. I used to use these quite a bit. They are pretty fun to use, nonetheless. Alright, the last of the grenades that Gunner can have is the Tactical Lead Burster. This one is also commonly known as the Gun Grenade. You get four of these. There's a few things that are unique about this one in comparison to the others. The first of which is it shoots bullets all around itself, it spins, and they fire out in a 3D dome-like shape. You get three bursts per grenade, with a total of 576 bullets for each one. And there's also an interesting damage modifier effect on this one. If an enemy is within 1.8 meters, they take 10% damage, but if they are further than 7 meters, they take 250%, scaling in between. Now, despite that damage within 1.8 meters, one, two or three of these will be able to kill a bulk detonator very, very easily if you get them right under. It can also do a lot of damage to the Hive Guard when his backside weak point is open. This is another grenade like the Cluster Grenade, where you've got to be careful around your teammates. There's a lot of friendly fire potential. Alright guys, the final part of this comprehensive guide to the Gunner class is going to detail my top survival tips for Hazard 4 and Hazard 5, as well as perks that I feel best suit the Gunner class's playstyle. First off, we're going to talk about the shields again, much like we did in the beginning when I briefly went over them. Abuse the heck out of the shields, seriously. They are an incredible clutch and give Gunner his nickname of being the wall. Especially on Hazard 4 and 5, the bug hordes tend to get pretty big. They have utility that cannot be overstated, including but not limited to several scenarios involved with saving your teammates, both from death, when the bugs are going after you or them, you can throw a shield down on top of them and stay inside in relative safety. When they are down, you can throw a shield on top of them, push the bugs away, and safely resurrect them. You can throw the shield on top of a resupply pod. I like to do that a lot to get your teammates around it to resupply turn around and shoot for a few seconds still before the shield goes down. There's a lot there. There's also holding and pushing objectives very, very easily, including but not limited to salvage missions when you are in the uplink and fuel cell zones because you're kind of trapped in one spot. When you are doing sabotage missions, when you're defending Haxi, these are really powerful as well. And even Doretta on escort missions, whether you're riding her in the tunnels or whether you're in the Hearthstone phase, you can use your shields to help protect her in those instances. It doesn't really matter that as Gunner class you have slow movement. You've got the slowest movement and least mobility of all the classes. But the shields more than make up for that. Because you can hunker down in an area, clean out the bugs, and then move on from there. Alright guys, my next tip for surviving Hazard 4 and 5 is to utilize that crowd control power. 
As Gunner, you bring the best ammo efficiency of the entire group when you look at your ammo versus the kind of damage that you can deal. You can shred through crowds really easily and still have plenty of ammo left. You provide a lot of support to your fellow classes. If you look at NG and Scout, their builds have a tendency to lean more towards single target damage, and they tend to run out of ammo much faster than you, especially Engineer. So you can finish off the bugs that they may not be able to, and then you can also support your Driller. They have a tendency to lean more towards status effect infliction, so they can disable the bugs for you either through fire, cryo, or the sludge pump, they can slow them down that way. And then you can utilize any of your primaries to finish off the bugs that are afflicted by those status effects. Alright guys, the next thing we are going to discuss is the active perks I feel best suit the gunner class. The first one we're going to touch on is Dash. This one is an excellent quality of life perk. I run it basically all the time on gunner. You dash forward for a couple seconds and then it goes on cooldown. It's very simple, but it's very strong. Even at the lowest level, the cooldown is 40 seconds. At the highest level, it is 25 seconds. So you can use this perk pretty frequently. And even in combat, like if the bugs are getting a little too close and personal, you can dash away from them and reposition. If a slasher just hits you and stunned you, you can get away from them a lot easier with dash. And then there's Field Medic. Field Medic is extremely good with Gunner, especially because of those shields. Combining those two things together can keep the mission from failing. Especially the Insta Res with Field Medic, you can only use it once per mission, but that can really keep a mission from failing. And even the passive resurrection time is really, really good, being able to do that faster. And then lastly, Iron Will. Iron Will for me is an absolute must. I run it on every class. And there's a lot of utility with it on Gunner. You can use Iron Will if you've got Field Medic, you can resurrect somebody right up off the ground. If you've got Dash, you can get to a resupply pod or Red Sugar, resurrect yourself, get back up and start shooting and still have some damage immunity. It's another one of those perks that can really make or break a mission. If you use it in the right spot, it can be a very, very powerful clutch. Alright, now we're going to head into the passive perks. We're going to start off right away with Resupplier. This one I run regardless of what my build is, regardless of my primary or my secondary. What Resupplier does is you resupply at a pod faster and you get more health out of it. At maximum level, you resupply 50% quicker and you get 25% more health. This is really, really useful and your weapons automatically reload as well. Important to note. This is really good in dense combat if you throw down a shield on top of a resupply pod. Resupply, turn around, shoot with fully loaded weapons. You can thin out the bugs a little bit more before your shield goes down. So that's really, really useful. Another perk that I really like is Born Ready. This one automatically reloads your unequipped weapons after a certain amount of time. At maximum level, this is after just 5 seconds. So that's pretty good. You can be running around with your other weapon. Shooting bugs, repositioning. The dwarf will give a prompt when born ready triggers, so then you know. Another one I really like to run is Thorns. Like Resupplier, I run this one universally. It makes it so bugs that hit you with melee attacks take damage back. If you have this perk at least at level 3, you can kill swarmers in one hit, which is good. Even as Gunner with crowd control, stuff's gonna get through and hit you. So thorns can help clean up some of those smaller enemies or potentially things like weakened grunts. Another one I like is elemental insulation. You take less damage from elemental effects, so things like fire, poison, that kind of stuff. At maximum level, you take 30% less damage. So this can be really useful, especially on magma core because of all the fire that is all over the place. And even in the fungus box with the poisonous mushrooms, it can help there as well. And then lastly, another perk that I really like to run, especially with the minigun, is Sweet Tooth. This one makes it so you get more health out of Red Sugar, and at maximum level, you also get a 20% speed boost for 10 seconds upon consuming Red Sugar. This one is just helpful because you get more health out of it, especially on shield disruption missions where you're always taking health damage because you don't have a shield. This can be particularly useful in there. 
Alright everybody, well that concludes the comprehensive guide to the Gunner class in Deep Rock Galactic. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you guys have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer. And then I would also like to give some props and credits here before we leave off as well. We're gonna start with Axis Kronos. I need to give some major props to this guy, and for a couple reasons. He took the time to show me around DaVinci Resolve, a new video editor that I have never used before, and it's the video editor that I used to create this project. I was sharing with him my original stuff that I had for the Comprehensive Gunner Guide, and he made a bold suggestion to me to completely tear down the entire thing and rebuild it from scratch because of what he had seen. In retrospect, looking back on it, I cannot be happier that he made that suggestion to me because this version of the project, I strongly feel, is leagues better than the previous version. And I feel much more proud of it as a result. So I really need to give you some massive props, Axis, for helping me make this project as best as it can be and steering me in a much better direction for future content. And then I would also like to extend credits to the folks that were there when I needed multiplayer footage for the Gunner Guide. There were definitely a few things that I felt would be much better represented if I was in a multiplayer setting, such as with Field Medic. I would like to give my sincerest credits and appreciation to Grand Lord Gaming, a fellow content creator, Crevice and Diamond, you guys are amazing. Big props to all of you. Alright, everyone. Well, I will see you next time. My fellow miners, rock and stone.